So two of the key things we want to talk about when we're thinking about probability distributions is what are the mean and standard deviation of the distribution. And what, what we mean by the mean is, let's say, if thinking about the data in the table over here, the population represented by this table. If you went to these people and over and over again, you picked people at random and you asked them, what is, what is your response? And you took all of those responses and averaged them. What would you get? All right, we, we can't do this just by taking one, two, three, and four, adding them up, dividing by four, right? That's not going to work because a significant majority of the people said one. Right? So we're going to see a lot more ones in that in that sample that we pull than we're going to see uh, fours, threes, even twos. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we've got some formulas here, um, and it's using you know, some some familiar notation. We've got the sigma here that says add everything up, and for the mean, and that's the first formula. This is saying take every data value, remember that's what x represents, multiply it by its corresponding probability, and add all those values up. That's going to be the mean. Then to find the standard deviation, uh, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to uh, take every data value and square it then multiply by the corresponding probability. And finally, here at the end, remember this mu, uh, this is the mean. So to find the standard deviation, we have to calculate the mean first. Then we're going to do this sigma, we're going to do this adding up thing, subtract the square of the mean from it, and then finally uh, take the square root of the whole thing. Right, And that'll give us a standard deviation. Okay. So these are, well, the, the mean, the, the standard deviation is a little messy. The mean isn't too bad. Um, so let's take a look at some examples. All right, so let's, let, let's look at an example. All right, I've got a probability distribution here. We're talking about uh, some, some survey responses, right? Some, somebody's doing a survey. Uh, everybody responds one through four. Uh, and, and we can see how these uh, responses are distributed. Those are the P of X values. All right, so uh, again, you, you see me do this many times now. I've got a table because I'm looking at my formula over here, and I see I need to know what x times p of x is. So that's this column. I need to know what x squared is. So I've got a column for that. And finally, what the product of x squared and p of x is. I've got a column for that. All right, so uh, let's, let's do the math here. I'm going to multiply x times p of x, 1 times 0 0.7 is 0 0.7, 2 times 0 0.18 is 0.36, 3 times 0.7, and 4 times 0.5. If I add all of these up, I get 1.47, and that's my mean, right? The mean is just the sum of these x times p of x value. So that is 1.47. All right, so let's see, for, for the standard deviation, um, I'm going to square the x's, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 4 squared. And then I'm going to take those numbers and multiply them by p of x. So this is 1 times 0.7 which is 0.7, this is 4 times 0.18, which is 0.72, 9 times 0.07 is 0.63, and 16 times 0.05 is 0.8. So if I add all of these up, this is the sigma x squared p of x piece, this adds up to 2.85. Okay, so sigma is the square root of 2.85 minus mu, right? That was my 1.47. So it's 1.47 squared. Get your calculator out. 
this comes out to 0 0.830. There's my standard deviation. All right, so now that we've got these values, we, we, can, do, we can answer the usual questions that we answer. For example, let's say um, I want to know what are the boundaries for what would be considered unusual for this distribution. Well, remember, our standard rule is the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. Right, so our usual values are going to be between um, mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma. And so this is, let's see, going go back to the numbers from the last slide, 1.47 minus 2 times 0 0.83. And over here, it's 1.47 plus 2 times 0.83. So this is negative 0.190 and 3.130. There's my boundaries, right? Anything between those two numbers would be considered um, usual, right? N not an unusual occurrence. So the answer to the second question, is it unusual for someone to have read four books. Well, it is four in this range. Right? It, it's not. It's over here, somewhere somewhat greater than three. So yeah, um, a result of, of four, uh, four books for, a, excuse me, I'm not talking about these survey responses. Um, uh, so somebody responding four on the survey uh, would be considered unusual. So there are uh, a, a variety of real-world practical situations that can be modeled using these discrete probability distributions. And that, that's what we're going to look, up, look at in the next series of lectures. In, in the next one, we're going to, to look at something called a binomial distribution uh, that, that is useful in things like engineering, uh, and we'll see some specific examples related to medical research.